All right, y'all. We are ready to start our casserole for our Thanksgiving casserole. So I've got my two cups of the buttery homestyle mashed potatoes. I've also got my chicken broth right here. So I'm going to add it up to the fill line. And they have a little line in here to show you how much you need to put in. And then we are going to stir it. I'm also, I've also got a measuring cup. I'm also going to put a cup of our chicken broth in there as well. Because we are going to use that for our gravy. And we still got some chicken broth left, which is great. We're going to put our two things of mashed potatoes in the microwave for one and a half minutes. Let me see, does it tell me? And we are going to actually start these first, y'all. Sometimes I wonder, but sometimes I wonder about myself, y'all. And that one's good and moistened and this one is going to be good and moistened and the reason I'm using the chicken broth y'all is to give it a little extra flavor here um, so I'm pretty much using what y'all saw me buy I've got salt and pepper uh, here to use as well Okay, next thing's next, we've got the cup of chicken broth in our lovely measuring cup. Into that, we're going to stir a packet of the brown gravy mix. There are three packs in there. We only need one for this. So, I will have two left. And I'm just going to kind of stir this around. Never put this in like already boiling water. It'll get super duper clumpy. Um, just so y'all know because usually these are cornstarch based and stuff and cornstarch and hot water don't mix too well so we've got the, that ready and we can put that in the microwave for a couple of minutes y'all and now we are going to move over to our 8 by 8 inch uh, baking dish here okay so our uh, casserole dish has been greased. Uh, the potatoes are out. The gravy is out. We're letting the gravy stand and thicken for the moment. So we're going to take our chicken. And I was hoping I could find a can or two there at the Dollar Tree. But such as it is, y'all, we are going to make this. And this actually could be a Thanksgiving meal out of completely shelf stable pantry items um, so it's not necessarily um, the fanciest Thanksgiving dinner you'd have but again if you were in a pinch and all you had was a microwave um, you could probably cook everything but the biscuits in just a microwave. Uh, as long as you had a casserole dish that would fit inside your microwave, you certainly could do that. Um, or if you have just a toaster oven or something small like that, there are definitely ways of getting around having a uh, regular stove top or oven. And then we're going to put in our, if I can keep from dropping stuff, y'all, my cream of mushroom soup. I'm 
trying, I'm trying, y'all. Again, this is just for y'all to have some ideas. This would work great for a smaller family, you know, if you've just got like four people or so, or even a couple adults and, I mean, you could probably feed two adults and three small children out of a casserole this uh, size. I'm going to combine that, and then I've got my two cans of green beans and my one can of carrots sitting over here, and I'm going to put those on in here. I'm gonna get all those green beans out of here because it's just how I am. All right, we are now going to stir this around really well. Um, and you can put other seasonings in this if you want to. You can certainly put um, sage, uh, rosemary, thyme, any of those things that you would put normally in a. A pot pie or something along that line so again this is just an idea of how you can make a just a general Thanksgiving meal out of exclusively pantry items um, this is in no way intended to be a gourmet meal but it will feed you and it will keep your belly from gnawing on itself I will be adding pepper to mine, um, all these canned things. They do have a reasonable amount of salt in them, as does the gravy mix and the potatoes. But I do want to add some pepper in here. So that it's got some more flavor. I'm still... Y'all, I'm still having some problems, a lot of problems, actually, with my left arm. But it is what it is, and we're going to make everything all right. Now that we've got that part of it done, the next thing I'm going to do is... Now, my topping is going to be my potatoes. My biscuits and my mac and cheese are going to be my side dishes for this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my gravy under, under my potatoes. That was a little bit clumpy, but not too bad considering I didn't start with a super cold, um, Thing of chicken broth that was just room temperature. And then on top, we are going to add our two things of mashed potatoes. And I'm going to try to spread these out so we can at least get some coverage. Like I said, I had to buy what they had. Normally, I would have gone for a pouch because there's a little bit more in there to get out um, to make something like this. However, in a pinch, this will work. And these are not known for being the easiest things to spread. I will just flat tell y'all, instant potatoes are not necessarily um, the easy spread thing. However, it's alright y'all. 
but I wanted some biscuits for a side dish instead of a topping today. And so that's the look. This is going to be what we've got as our main dish. And as you see, that was plenty of potatoes. For the top of this, we've got fairly good coverage, and that was just two small little containers. We're going to bake this at 350 degrees until it gets all nice and bubbly and ooey and gooey and that kind of good stuff. Um, so, we will get that, and then we will start the mac and cheese and the cheddar garlic biscuit mix. I will be back in just a moment. We will finish that.